No, this is um, a through hike of the WordPress API. Um, if you went down to the food truck, you already got your warm-up hike in because that was definitely a hike down there. But the food was good. I really enjoyed it. Um, so is anybody here a hiker or a backpacker? Has done any hiking backpack in their lives? So I like to um, put little themes behind my talk, make it a little bit more fun, things that I'm interested in as well. So we're going to prepare you for your through hike of the WordPress REST API. So a through hike, if you don't know, is considered hiking a long trail from start to finish, kind of in one go, within like one season, um, the summer season of hiking, or something like that. Um, or while a um, section hike is when people will break up little sections of a hike, of a long trail, and do one at a time, maybe over a matter of years. Um, so now we prepare for this through hike. It's not easy, so we're going to help you get through um, with this little primer we have here. Now, um, the U.S. has a system of national scenic trails. This is the map of them. Um, they're all public lands, free for all of us to access and use and enjoy. They're managed by the National Park Service. Volunteers take care of them through the whole system here. So, I mean, kind of like um, the open source software of hiking and backpacking. So, many of these trails are thousands of miles long. They stretch across large parts of the country. So, I came from way up here in um, the Upper Peninsula, Michigan, right by the shores of Lake Superior. The North Country Trail is one of the ones that runs along, you know, right near, near where I live. I've done a lot of hikes on that throughout. Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Um, and when I was, when I was thinking um, of ideas for the talk, I thought about this, and down here, about 80 miles north of us, is the southern terminus of the Appalachian Trail, or the AT it's called. So, starts about 80 miles north, if you um, look it up on Google Maps, at Springer Mountain. And this is a spot where most through hikers in the AT will start. So I figure it's a good place to start your journey on your through hike of the WordPress API. So some of you may have um, watched the movie or read the book, A Walk in the Woods, book by Bill Bryson. The movie stars um, Nick Nolte and Robert Redford. Um, I like the book a lot better than the movie, but that's usually what happens. Um, and this can be a grueling journey and a pretty funny journey in Bill Bryson's uh, experience. The full trail stretches from here in Georgia to Mount Katahdin in Maine. It's about a total of 20, 20, 2,200 miles. So for most people, this through hike takes about five to seven months to complete. So um, I think the quickest ever done was like 47 days and change, which is kind of crazy. So five to seven months. I hope you're all ready for a six month long presentation here, if we're doing a three hike too. All right, but there's some things you don't have to worry about, like six months long, you don't have to worry about bears on this through hike. You're not gonna worry about hanging up your lunch up high to keep, keep away bears or being the soft tacos of the bear world. Um, also another thing you don't have to worry about is um, how to squat next to a tree. We have plenty of bathroom facilities here, you're good to go. Um, but if you're wondering about how to squat next to a tree, don't worry, I'm not going to demonstrate. But REI did a video on YouTube if you do want to find out. So look it up um, if you're really interested. We're not going over that. So, And thankfully for you guys, I was told I only have 30 minutes. He's over there making sure I don't go over, so no six months. So, uh, so there's several reasons you're gonna use the WordPress REST API, like several reasons people have for their through hikes, their hiking, backpacking trips. Some people like to do things for exercise, some people have to have different goals in their lives. They might wanna go out and find themselves, kind of like Reese Witherspoon's character in this book and movie. Um, but I don't know, maybe you will, but I don't, probably not gonna find yourself in an API, maybe. Um, but we'll go through a few ways that you will use the WordPress API. 
We'll go over some definitions of the terms being used in here. And then we'll look through what WordPress has available in core and then how you too can extend that API to build things for yourself. So I figured to start it off, if you don't know what an API is, we'll start off with definition because it would get a lot more confusing if you didn't have any idea of this and we start moving on from here. So API stands for Application Programming Interface. And basic terms, it's a way for two programs or websites, other applications, to talk to each other. Um, this is a definition, I believe, from Wikipedia. Um, but most everything you use out there now has an API. So you're looking at things like Facebook, Instagram, Zoom, GitHub, your weather channel, your weather apps, things like that, project management, so management softwares. They all have APIs now so they can interact with each other. So if any of you use GitHub and say you use Slack, a lot of times with integrations that work together where um, pull requests from GitHub will get pushed directly to Slack so you're notified about them in your channels. That's using the API with those. Um, even things like if you use Strava for your um, tracking your runs or tracking your bike rides, um, they have an API as well and, they, and also they use an API from other sources to like, provide the weather along with your runs and your rides. And they integrate with, say, the Apple Health app on your iPhone. So you can have the data in both places at once. So how is this used in WordPress? There are several ways you can use it. One of the big ones now is the block editor. So everything out there now is being built with the block editor. Um, there's going to be some good talks on this during the WordCamp here, so we're not going to go into everything, the details of the block editor, but uh, it's now the way you build pages within WordPress, all built now using JavaScript. Not all the PHP behind it like used before, there's still PHP way in the back end of it, but the front end interface you interact with now is built with JavaScript. And that uses the WordPress REST API to communicate um, from what you see in the screen to the PHP in the back end that puts all the stuff in the database. <clears throat> Another one is headless WordPress. So not just, it's a buzzword out there, it's not just because it's the Halloween season uh, that we're cutting up head, the headless horseman here. But um, if you were at the talk just before lunch, when you guys were probably a lot more peppy before uh, eating and getting bogged down with all the food, um, there was a talk on Headless WordPress, go to wordpress.tv after. He had a lot of great information on it. Um, so I'm not gonna get in details on what it is, but basically it's um, decoupling WordPress backend from your front end views. So you have, um, you use the WordPress content management system still, build stuff in your uh, block editor or use the custom post types. Um, all the features you have when you're editing in WordPress but you don't use the normal themes and front-end display made in PHP and WordPress. Instead, you can use it in things like, um, like maybe a static site generator. One instance is Gatsby. Uh, these type of things will speed things up a lot because you're not processing the PHP in the background as well as um, displaying the front-end stuff. Um, also, one-page applications. So you build things with, um, React, Vue, Angular, a lot of these new technologies, it gives you, also gives you a lot of speed, a lot of performance improvements, plus you get to use some of the cool new features, build some nice interfaces along with, um, with these tools, along with your WordPress, and you still have WordPress in the back end to manage all your content, all your data, the, you know, the beautiful system we all know and love there in WordPress, one of the easiest platforms for that purpose. Um, and there are several hosted providers, several frameworks that allow you to build these things with your WordPress site using the WordPress API. So another option is if you were looking to build apps or make third-party integrations. 
Um, WordPress, of course, has their own mobile app that you can get on your phone to manage WordPress, manage your site, or manage a WordPress.com site. This uses, yes, the API to make those um, connections. You're not going into your login actually into your WordPress site within the PHP. You're using the API to make that connection to your site and bringing data back and forth. Um, you can also, there's also many services or platforms out there that allow you to build your own um, mobile app powered by WordPress using the same features of the WordPress API. Plus, with third-party integrations, just like I said that um, Strava hooks up with Apple Health or your um, Zoom or GitHub hooks up with your Slack, um, you can make integrations with your own website to any of these services that have APIs as well. Um, or even say you had some legacy system within your company that you're working for, and as long as the system has a way to connect out to the, and make a request outside of the organization into a different, well, not outside the organization, but outside of itself, um, you could build something, say you're producing widgets on the line and you want to uh, post to your intranet that the 100th widget was created. You could build something theoretically like that that would use a WordPress API to create a post like that. So the biggest thing when planning a hike, not a hiking topic, is to be prepared. It's the motto for both the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts. So you can find tons of information on what to take with you on a hike, on a backpacking trip. Online, you can go to places like REI. They'll walk you through your pack, um, get everything set up for you. And <clears throat> we're gonna look at the same thing, kind of, uh, for what to pack in your WordPress API pack. How to get ready, some tools and some tips that can kind of guide you along this journey as you start to build things with the API. So a refresher, I'm bringing up the API definition again. It's a way to communicate between two websites, two applications, two programs of some type, communicate from one to the other. Um, another term you're gonna hear in our um, acronym soup is REST. This is a REST API. Um, here's the definition up here. Uh, we're, I'm not gonna dig deep into this, but basically, it's kind of a set of constraints to specifically work on the web, allowing, um, well, with the constraints, it helps you make sure that things are similar when you're working with different IP APIs, so you're not worried that one thing's gonna be totally different than another. Um, next thing coming up is a route. Um, according to the WordPress Developer Handbook, a route is the name you use to access endpoints. So think of this, I think of this more in our hiking analogy here as the section of the trail to your destination. You build your route. You find your route to get to your destination. Follow down the path. So if you're looking right here, our path is in WordPress, version two of their API. You're getting to posts. You're getting to post number one, two, three. That's your path as you're hiking down the WordPress trail system here, I guess you'd say, the route. Next one up is an endpoint. Um, I guess kind of my analogy for the endpoint is maybe you're looking at your destination along the trail. So maybe you're looking for a nice lookout like this. You know there's some places you want to see along the trail. Uh, maybe there's a waterfall on your hike. You want to get to this, act, this, this place along your trail. So functions in computer terms and WordPress term, it's a function you want to do to the API. So for example, you want to retrieve a post, you want to get one of your blog posts out of WordPress, um, one of your custom post pages, get that information out, or maybe you want to update the post, delete a post, plenty of other things out there. We'll go through um, a couple of them that are available in a bit. Um, so where do you find these routes and endpoints? How do you access the WordPress API? Well, it's going to be on your website, you're gonna take your domain slash wp-json. If you go just directly to this URL on your site, you will get 
um, a request to the WordPress API giving you some information. That one shows you basic information about your site and some information on some of the routes that are available on your site. And if you want to get down the route you want after that, you would add on the other parts of the route. So WP, V2, posts, one, two, three, like I talked about earlier. You attach that to the end of your URL. But how do you do this? Um, through these HTTP request methods, these indicate your desired type of action. So think of this like when you, you have to say what you want to do once you get to your point. You want to say, look at that waterfall maybe. So you get to this part in your route, to the endpoint you want to get to, and you set a get request in there to get the post that you want to get. Post request would typically submit data. A delete request would typically delete a resource, delete some data. Um, there's other ones too. These are three of the major ones you'll be seeing if you're using APIs. Okay, little example. So just kind of running through what we just showed here. Um, for example, you start with the URL. I said your domain up there followed by WPJSON to get to your actual JSON IPA or your actual IP, AP, API, not IPA, I think I'm thinking about the after party. <laughs> um, and then go to WordPress v2 post 123. That gets you down your trail on your hike through the API. Your route on that is, again, WP v2 post 123. So um, one thing it says is the route doesn't include the WP JSON because that's just the base path to get to the API. And so this specific route has three different endpoints. One of them will trigger getting the post data. One will trigger updating the post. And another will, treat, will trigger deleting the post, depending on what type of request you send to this, um, on this route here. So how, what does it look like when you get this data? Um, it comes back in JSON. Again, another Halloween reference here, or Friday the 13th, because that was yesterday. Um, not quite as scary as uh, JSON Voorhees, but to some people, maybe JSON can look a little scary. Um, but what it is, is a standard format for data in JavaScript. So, uh, called JavaScript object notation. We'll take a look at what some of it looks like. This is on the WordCamp Central website. I think it's just bas basically um, hitting there slash wp-json. And as you'll see, it has the curly braces, which indicate you're within the object. You can have um, key value pairs. So the name of the site is WordCamp Central. The URL, central.wordcamp.org. You have all that information laid out nicely for your application, the other application communicating with the site to take in. Um, then you also have these ones right here, these namespaces, which aren't in a um, name value pair there. They're in an array that's just like a numerical array, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, like your normal arrays if you do work with WordPress or with PHP or with JavaScript, but they're JavaScript arrays just a note, are um, with the square brackets, and it's an object if it's with the curly brackets. And the objects will typically have um, a name to the element in it. So on to some tools and tips for when you're working with the API. Um, WordPress.org has the developer handbook. There is plenty of information there on the API. It lists through every one of the endpoints built into WordPress core. This, maybe think of as your map of the trail. You want to know how to find something, you consult your map. So you look where you're going. Um, the developer handbook will have it all listed for you so you can plan out your journey. Uh, move on next to another tool that I would definitely recommend taking is called Postman. 
Uh, this, what this is, is an API client app that is available on your computer. It allows you to um, put in your URL, put in some parameters, and then brings back that JSON for you, easily readable, allowing you to actually see what data you're going to be working with. Very good for testing, very good for learning what an API does, um, even saves. You can save queries on there, so if you want to get back to them and everything, maybe think of this as the GPS unit you're using on your trip here to make sure you're going in the right direction. Another option like this too is within your browser. So I told you JSON can be scary. That's the scary up there. Um, that's what it looks like in its raw format. You know, we went back here, this looks kind of nice. I went back to the other, um, this style right here looks pretty nice. If you bring it up in most browsers right away, it's gonna look like that big jumbled mess on top. That's why for, there are browser extensions for most browsers. Firefox, I believe, has it built in, but there's one for Chrome JSON formatter, there's one for Safari, that will make your JSON pretty. It'll prettify your JSON, so you can actually read it and not have that mess up there. You can actually see what's in the objects and the arrays that you're working with. And the most important tip, most important tip for, I'm gonna say for hiking, backpacking, and web development is bring snacks. You don't wanna be hungry on the trip. There's this uh, TikTok out here, if you're on that, um, going around, I've seen that it's not about the hiking, it's just about eating food in cooler places. And I can't disagree with that either. All right, we'll look on to some of the routes in, w in WordPress core. Um, now there's an endpoint there, routes for most anything you're gonna work with, the stuff you're doing in the WordPress admin, or maybe stuff you're building in plugins using PHP. You can access pretty much all of it through an API as well. Like I said, look to the developer handbook for everything because if I went through every single one of them and showed you every single one of them, we might actually be here for six months. Um, so there's, like I said, there's posts, you can edit posts, delete posts, um, pages, comments, nav menus, users, plugins, on and on through all the parts of WordPress in the WordPress API. Okay, and how do you work with the WordPress API? I told you um, the, the HTTP requests, but how do you make these requests? Well, again, there's many ways to be able to do this because every language out there, pretty much every language out there will have their own way to make an HTTP, HTTP request. So there's ways in jQuery, there's ways in React, Vue, Angular, straight JavaScript. Um, you can access it from the command line. Curl is one of the main and oldest ways to make these type of requests. Um, again, if we went over all these, we would be here for a much longer time as well. But there are ways to work into it. You go in, pass in your URL, pass in parameters, and try to get back, and get back your information from your WordPress site. Another term to think about is the schema of um, your data. So what the schema is, is your data returned back in a consistent format. WordPress created a certain schema of how things are set out and what data is typically returned. So with WordPress posts, you can know what to expect. So they'll have you know, your normal things like your date, your ID, your GUID, your slug, status, content, title, author, all those things will be available for a post. And similar for other parts of data within WordPress. Um, and there's arguments. I talked a little bit about, mentioned a little bit of things about arguments here. So say you're trying to get some posts, but you're not gonna always want every single post from your site. You're gonna wanna pick post based on certain elements, certain parameters. So, Think that WordPress, WP Query, if you're a PHP developer with WordPress, you probably have made a query in WordPress using WP Query. Similar to that, you can pass in arguments um, to the API to get back different types of data. So similar there, some different 
Um, different wording to them, but similar information here. You can get how many per page. Um, you can do a search, you can get the author, you can exclude or include things, the order. You can query by several different types of parameters. Um, and this is for posts. And there's different ones for users, different ones for other data within WordPress. And I'm showing our get request up here. So we want to get, um, so we're going to WordPress version two of the API. Um, I guess talking about this a little bit, I mentioned this earlier, but after the WPJSON, they typically is a namespace, which is WP in this case, WordPress is core stuff, and then the version. This is the version two of their API. So if you change things later, you can make a version three, et cetera. And then we're checking for posts, and then we're putting the parameters. You can put this on the end of the URL in most cases, or the methods of um, you know, querying this. Sometimes they have other ways you can pass parameters along as well. Like I said, I'm not gonna go into every single way that you can access an API, but you can pass different parameters along. In this case, we're passing, we want five returned in a page of them. We want them all published by author with the ID number of two, and we want them ordered alphabetically by their title. Authentication, so think of this one, um, if you know about hiking or uh, backpacking, sometimes you need to actually get a, um, a permit for a hike. This is kind of the permitting process. So say at this hike right here, this is the Wave. It's a really cool place in Arizona. Uh, they only allow so many people in there per year. You have, you have to go into a lottery for it. Uh, but it's, I mean, I'd love to go here. It's super cool. It's like this um, whole wavy formation in the desert down there. Um, but like I said, they only allow X number of people per day, X number of people per year uh, because they want to protect this place. Otherwise, if we get overrun with tourists, things will get ruined. You know, you want to protect the stuff on your website in the same way. Sometimes you have similar, you have um, sensitive data out there. You don't want to be able to, anybody just to access that, but you want a certain application or a certain set of people to be able to access that. Um, or if you want to make the creating posts, you're not going to want just anybody out there to create a post. You're going to need to authenticate to get that post created. So this provides that access, the authentication. And you can pass along authentication parameters in your request as well. And there's several different ways of doing authentication with an API. Um, again, I'm not gonna go into all this, or unless we want a six month talk, but a few of the different ways that are common are used. WordPress itself uses some cookie authentication in it. So if you're working like directly in your WordPress site, but accessing the backend through the API, that would be available in some cases. Um, they have a way now of doing some basic authentication with application passwords that you can use. Uh, they're often used one is this JWT Java web token um, authentication plugin that's able to use that for your authentication. And there's also an OAuth plugin. Um, and there's other ways out there as well. Um, but these are a couple things to look into as you continue on in the journey. Plugins too, now it's not just in WordPress core. There are API routes in many of the major plugins. Probably most of them out there have added them now. So look at WooCommerce, ACF, Gravity Forms, whatever we have out there. Most of them all have an API now. So you can access data through those plugins or create data using those plugins um, through the WordPress API in a similar fashion. Show down here, I did put down like um, example if you're going into WooCommerce. So it uses, instead of WP, it uses WC as the namespace for your um, API request here and, or for your route. Um, and then you're, you know, retrieving your orders from the WooCommerce site. So, and now if you want to blaze your own trail, you can extend the WordPress API. Obviously the plugins added it. It means that WordPress, like with most things, makes it extendable. It makes it allows you to build your own API endpoints 
Um, you can modify things on existing endpoints, add data to them as well. Um, if you make custom post types, you can make sure those are available at, in the WordPress API as well, because you don't want just the posts and pages. All this other cool stuff you're building on your WordPress website, you're gonna wanna be able to use in your applications, your custom builds that you put out there. You can even add endpoints of um, any custom data you want there. They don't have to follow the same schema as the WordPress posts do. You can build your own schema if you're building a fully custom application and push out data in different formats if you'd like. Here's an example of um, adding custom post type support for the API. You're doing your normal register post type and as you create that, you wanna make sure this show and rest argument is on here as true. I believe that does default come across as false. Um, so if you want it to appear within your API, you definitely want that to be true. So you can then, this is a, adding your own custom endpoint, a little example here. You can build your own endpoint, like I said, to return any data you want. It doesn't have to be just like a custom post type, like the posts are. You can build your own type of data coming from whatever stuff you build within WordPress. Um, so with this one, looking at it, you're gonna add it into the REST API init action and use the register REST route function. Um, so you then create your namespace in the first argument. In this case, my plugin with the version attached to it, version one of it. You wanna have that namespace so it doesn't get mumbled and jumbled with any other types of um, APIs added to your site and um, you can identify it from everything else. And then you continue on your path from that. In this case, this is one I just took from the WordPress developer handbook. It's author and then it uses a regex to, um, I don't know if it's actually a regex, but something to um, actually find the ID of that author. So this is searching for an author um, and it'll use the get method. We talked about the HTTP request methods earlier. And the callback is the function then that you want it to run. So when you put this request in there, it runs that function. It'll then, you'll then want to return the data within that function that you want out on your API. So this is the end of my talk but um, the beginning of your journey on the through hike of the WordPress API. So we went through what an API is, some tools and tips. We looked through some of the things Core has to offer and showed you how to blaze your own trail. So the Appalachian Trail, like I said, starts down here in Georgia. For, and for through hikers, it typically ends at the top of Mount Katahdin in Maine, about 2,200 miles away. Um, 2,280 miles from here, I guess, it's 80 miles away. Goes through 14 states and takes about six months, five to seven months. So enjoy your through hike of the WordPress API. Um, and you can find more information about me and my website. I don't really have a lot on there, but if you wanna contact me, and I do have slides on there, and just let me know if you have any questions. Open for questions now. Yes. I just wondered about that authentication piece. Yes. What's your favorite way to authenticate against it and make it persist? I feel like it's always kind of been a struggle for me. Um, I wish I had a good answer. <laughs> I mean, I've used that JWT auth plugin before and I've done some basic auth stuff, but I don't really have, I don't know, I don't really have the best answer for it, so. And if for, he asked what the best way to um, persistently authenticate was, but you know, if anybody else has any suggestions, they can speak up as well. Any other questions? Yes. Okay. Yeah, he asked um, if by default when you install WordPress is the API active and there's a way, is there a way to turn it off? 
And the answer is yes, it is active. And yes, there is a way to turn it off. In most cases, you probably don't want to turn it off. Like I said, um, the block editor, which is a big part of core now, does use a WordPress API. So if you did that, the block editor would immediately stop working. Uh, but there is a way to do it. You can put a snippet within your functions.php or within a plugin that will disable it. Um, and it is on by default, yes. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you. And enjoy your hike. <laughs>